If Darwinian theory is such a poor theory, why don't more scientists reject it? There are two reasons why more scientists don't reject it. One is that if they did, they would lose um, all of their prestige within science. They would never get another research grant. Um, and if they didn't have academic tenure, they'd get fired. Uh, there is a system of thought control over this, uh, which is extremely rigid. It's worth your professional life. That's another reason why an outsider has to be the one to challenge this. So that's reason number one. There's an enforcement mechanism. And even senior people are frightened about it, and they'll tell you if you you know, get them aside where they don't think they're being overheard. The, um, the second reason uh, is ideological. The great problem is that if Darwinism isn't true, science doesn't know what is true. You see, if the, the microevolution explanation isn't extrapolated to explain all of creation, then they don't know how it could have happened, and that's intolerable. All of the philosophers of science that are writing for the modern era have explained that um, science doesn't like to have no answer. You see, they, they will prefer to stick with a, an inadequate paradigm or general theory um, rather than to say, well, we just don't know what it is because then they, they don't have any place to start uh, uh, proposing experiments, drafting grant, uh, proposals for research grants, and so on. Uh, so, so they'll stick with the false theory if the only alternative is no theory at all, and that's the situation that they're in. freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, freedom from fear, freedom of religion. Martin Luther King said, America is essentially a dream. And he said, it is a dream of freedom and equality. And freedom is the way to equality. And America simply would not be America without freedom. In every turning point in our history, the decision has always been about freedom. Freedom is what makes this country great. Freedom has allowed us to create, to explore, to overcome every challenge we have faced as a nation. But imagine if these freedoms were taken away. Where would we be? What would we lose? Well, unfortunately, I no longer need to imagine. It's happening. We are losing our freedom in one of the most important sectors of society, science. I have always assumed that scientists were free to ask any question, to pursue any line of inquiry without fear of reprisal. But recently, I have been alarmed to discover that this is not the case. It all began when I met evolutionary biologist Richard Sternberg in Washington, D.C. His life was nearly ruined when he strayed from the party line while serving as editor of a scientific journal affiliated with the prestigious Smithsonian Museum of Natural History. Your office was over there? That's correct. This here is the West Wing. Directly ahead of us is the West Wing of the Natural History Museum. So now you're not there anymore because you're a bad boy. No, I'm not. No, I was, I was exiled. You're, you're a bad boy. You question the powers that be. What was Dr. Sternberg's crime? He dared to publish an article by Dr. Stephen Meyer, one of the leading lights of the intelligent design movement. The paper ignited a firestorm of controversy merely because it suggested intelligent design might be able to explain how life began. As a result, Dr. Sternberg lost his office, his political and religious beliefs were investigated, and he was pressured to resign. The questioning of Darwinism was was a, a bridge too far for many. The mentioning of intelligent design that occurs at the end of the paper was, was over the top. And I think the intelligent design proponents have raised a number of very important questions. And you wanted to get those questions 
brought up and discussed. Placed on, placed on the table. Placed on the table. People were so upset about it. They were so upset that you could see their, they had a physical emotional reaction. Wow. They were saying that Stephen C. Meyer is a well-known Christian, that Stephen C. Meyer is an intelligent design proponent, that Stephen C. Meyer is a Republican. It was all couched in terms of religion, politics, and sociology. The way the chair of the department um, uh, put it is that I was viewed as an intellectual terrorist. Terrorist. Because of giving the topic of intelligent design some modicum of credibility. What happened to Dr. Sternberg was terrible, but surely it was just an isolated case. After Dr. Caroline Crocker simply mentioned intelligent design in her cell biology class at George Mason University, her promising academic career came to an abrupt end. My supervisor invited me into his office. He said, I'm going to have to discipline you for teaching creationism. And I said, I mentioned intelligent design on a couple of slides, but I did not teach creationism. He said, nonetheless, you have to be disciplined. At the end of the semester, I lost my job. Not only did this well-loved professor lose her job at George Mason, she suddenly found herself blacklisted, unable to find a job anywhere. So whenever I interviewed for a job, I would be offered it usually on the spot. Since this has happened, and since people can Google my name, I'm finding that when I send my credentials, I do get interviews, I get many interviews, but I never get offered a job. I don't tell them about my, about my uh, science sin. I was only trying to teach what the university stands for, which is academic freedom. There's nothing to be learned in neurosurgery by assuming a, uh, an accidental origin for the, the parts of the brain that we work on. It wasn't just biologists who were feeling the Darwinist wrath. When neurosurgeon Michael Egnor wrote an essay to high school students saying doctors didn't need to study evolution in order to practice medicine, the Darwinists were quick to try and exterminate this new threat. A lot of people and a lot of blogs called me um, unprintable names that were printed. <laughs> there are a lot of very, very nasty comments. Um, <clears throat> other people suggested that people call the university I work at and uh, suggested perhaps it's time for me to retire. I realized when I kind of went public with, with my doubts about the adequacy of Darwin's theory uh, that, uh, you know, that I would encounter criticism. Uh, what has uh, amazed me is the um, uh, viciousness and the, the sort of uh, baseness of it. I'm an old guy, I have uh, tenure, I'm academically safe, but the young people and what, what is happening to them in America right now because of this scientism gulag is, uh, is really terrible. Apparently, Professor Marx was not as safe as he thought. A few months after this interview, Baylor University shut down his research website and forced him to return grant money once they discovered a link between his work and intelligent design. In order to attract grants, you have to market yourself. So you put up sites and call yourself labs and groups and things like that in order to get visibility. And in my entire experience in academia, I never went to any superior and asked them any permission to put up any of these labs. So uh, the fact that this was singled out, let alone shut down, is jaw-dropping. It's astonishing. I have never been uh, treated like this in my about 30 years in academia. Shut up, you freak! I say shut up! It's a man! Oh, oh, oh. If you peel back the onion, I think that there is no doubt that the center of this is my work in what would some would call intelligent design. People really get emotional about this. Uh, when you ever say intelligent design in, in a room of academics, them's fighting words. Creationists. Astronomer Guillermo Gonzalez found himself in a fierce shootout with Iowa State University following the publication of his book arguing that the universe is intelligently designed. Despite a stellar research record that has led to the discovery of several planets, his application for tenure was denied, putting his career in jeopardy. I worried about 
my tenure a little bit in 2005 when the petition was being circulated because uh, I viewed that as a strategy of Hector Avalos and his associates to try to poison the atmosphere on campus against me because he knew I didn't, I wasn't tenured yet and I was very vulnerable. I have little doubt that I would have tenure now uh, if I hadn't done any professional work on intelligent design. Dr. Gonzalez had this advice for scientists who might be thinking about following his example. If they value their careers, <laughs> they should keep quiet about their intelligent design views. We know there are times and places to be quiet and other times and places when we can make noise if we want to. Will you show us? Of course. Boys and girls, how would you like to show some of the ways we know of being quiet? It's the kind of thing where you just learn to keep your mouth shut. In addition to those scientists who are willing to appear on camera, we encountered many more who didn't dare show their face for fear of losing their jobs. You use an intelligent design perspective to get the research done, but you're not allowed to talk about it in public. And so there is definitely incentive, if you think about it, for people to remain within the mainstream. You know, what, what's he up to? What, what is he thinking? Is he one of them? That kind of thing.